How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this really cool sci-fi text animation. It's a lot of fun with nodes, really making some really easy customizable patterns, having some fun with the spacing of the letters, having fun with fonts. We'll get into that right after this quick message. Today's video is brought to you by the Real Time Materials. It's a pack of over 200 procedural materials. They have tons of editable components like roughness control, pattern control, and color control. Adding these materials is super easy. You just simply hit Shift A, scroll down to the categories, pick your material and start designing. It has a growing list of categories. I just recently added rock and wood, all totally procedural, all totally editable and much more flexible than image textures. All updates are free. If you'd like to learn more, hit the link in my description. All right, so we are back. This is kind of what we are working on today. Let me just make the text the center here. And we have all of this fun stuff. I'm really showing you kind of the background of what's happening, just these planes and making some really fun custom shaders. So what we need to do here is get a plane. I'm gonna hit R, X, 90, S, 5, and then Control, A, Apply, Scale. We're gonna be making some really fun patterns here and cutting holes in them. So let's go straight into shading. And let's make sure we're in the EV render engine and let's turn on these little check marks. Side panels here and let's go into making this. I don't like seeing that background, so we'll just kill that. So what we're gonna do is just take out this principle, shift A, search, and we're gonna get a mix shader because we're gonna be getting transparency and emission. So shift A, search, TRA, make sure you get transparent and not translucent. That's something, a mistake I make all the time because they look the same to my dyslexic brain. All right, so we're also gonna get an emission node and plug that right here. So what we're gonna do, give this mix shader and gonna get a color ramp. Color ramp right there and we're gonna plug the color into the factor. Let's go ahead and start getting the pattern. That's really gonna make the majority of our animation when it comes to these procedural patterns. And that's our Voronoi. So one of my favorite nodes here. Now, if you have the node regular add-on enabled, comes with Blender by default, just hit Control T. If you don't have that enabled, just go to your preferences and type in node regular and turn that on. So having that Voronoi texture selected, we'll just hit Control T. We get this set up. Make sure you use the object coordinate. We're gonna plug distance, very important that you use distance because that's gonna allow us to have some customization. So what we're gonna see here is when we bring in this color ramp, it actually needs to be inverted. So invert the color ramp and we're gonna bring it this way. And now we have all these really cool circles. So we're just gonna bring them like that. What's really cool about that is if you didn't know, the randomness really just kind of flattens out and you get a perfect dot grid then you're gonna do whatever you want there. It's really fun for flat animations. Now you'll notice we have a transparency node, but it's not actually turned on. So one weird thing in Blender here, in EV specifically, it works fine in cycles. You need to turn on your transparency. So go click on this, go from blend mode to alpha blend. And there we go, we have that. Now notice these are really soft. We need to go from linear to constant, and that's gonna give us a very hard edge or completely flat shaded circle. So what we're gonna do is now get another color ramp and cut a hole in the middle, almost like this is a donut. So we're gonna be playing with this emission line. So let's just bring these over so we can kind of see what we're doing. And let's go ahead and drop a mix shader on here. So I'm just hit Shift D, drop them there. Make sure your emission is on the top and we're gonna get another transparency. So we'll just hit Shift D, plug it there. And then now we're gonna get a color ramp to actually do the cutting into our circle. So I'm gonna hit Shift D on this color ramp and um, get this distance of the Voronoi, plug it there, and the color goes into the factor. And then now if we play with our color ramp, boom, look at that. We now have our nice little circles. Now, to make this look more sci-fi and techy and organic, which those two words go together sometimes, um, we'll bring this randomness in a little bit. And so if we play with our 4D, which we need to enable now, 4D is going to allow us to animate that. So if we hold down Shift and play with the W, Shift just makes it a nice animation. We're gonna see, we get this really cool pattern and it's super fun to kind of play with. You can see how it's kind of jumpy. Let's bring this randomness all the way over here so we get a much more smooth kind of controlled pattern. And once we actually animate it, you'll see how they kind of go bigger and smaller. But now we've created the circle pattern. Here's what's really cool about this. If I just hit Shift D on this plane here, and then I hit the two to make a duplicate, 
we go from Illusidian to uh, Chebyshev, we now have squares. So if we play with this W and kind of bring them around, and then now play with that W, and now we have a completely new pattern doing the same animation, and then we can play with kind of play with that scale to make them bigger, smaller, anything you want to do. I'm actually going to keep them the same scale just to keep it with the same whole vibe. Now we need to make one more pattern. It's a much more simple one. So I'm gonna hit Shift D on this here. I'm gonna click the two. And then all I'm gonna do here is bypass this. So I'm gonna take this mix shader and just plug it straight into the surface. And then I'm gonna delete these nodes. And then I'm gonna go here from Chevy Chev to Illicidian. And then I'm going to invert my color. Actually, I'm just gonna pull the white over here and then bring the randomness all the way over. And then of course, 4D needs to be switched to 3D. If you make your randomness to zero, 4D will not work. And then we're just gonna go ahead and make a really, really small dot grid. And that really gives it kind of a complete finished look on this whole pattern. There you go, guys, we created some patterns. Now we do need to go ahead and bring up the strength of our glowing. So let's go back to the official view, hit on the world, and bring it down. So bring up the strength a little bit. We just want a little bit of glowing on each of these. See, even the dots, the, actually the dots don't need to really glow. And we only want a subtle amount of glowing. Too much glow makes it look cheesy and bad and we don't like that. So let's go ahead and animate these dots. And uh, actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and make, it, make sure this is in the looping box method. If you've seen the channel a lot, you know about the box method. What that is, if we hit Shift A, get a plane and hit S8. We're calling this our box, even though it's not a box. And then we're gonna go ahead and distribute our planes around. So bring this plane here, click the plane here, bring this plane here. So now, once we run our camera through this, it's gonna loop. I'll explain that more if you've never seen that, if I've never done that for you before. So click here, click on this orange box, and we're just gonna kind of hide that. So go here to viewport display and click on wire. So now as we're designing, he won't be in the way and we'll delete him later. Okay, so now we have this. So the great thing about this is when we run our camera through it, we actually are gonna be able to have this really cool parallax effect, if that's the correct word I'm using. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the tilde key. It's right above the tab key for me. I'm gonna click front, shift A, get camera. And then right here on the camera, here in the transform settings, I'm gonna go negative eight on the Y axis. So now we're gonna go to our camera, check it out. If I hit G and middle click, you can see this is what we're working with. Looks really, really cool. I'm gonna go ahead and get my camera angle, click on the little green, click on the camera up here, click on the little green thing, and we're gonna bring it a good amount wider because we do wanna have that in our animation. Okay, so now that we have that, we're gonna get a floor and a ceiling for our design. So let's go ahead and get a plane, shift A, get a mesh plane, hit S8, and we're gonna bring it up a little bit, and we're gonna hit tab to subdivide it, right click for the subdivision, subdivide, and then we're gonna give it maybe like 30, is 30 enough? That might be too much, how about 20? How does that look on the view? 20 looks like it might work. So we'll do, actually we'll do 15, just to say, st just to say safe, so I don't want it to be too much. I'm gonna hit tab to go out of edit mode. We're gonna go to the modifiers and add a wireframe modifier. Just this very common grid design that we've seen quite a bit in animation. We're gonna go to the, the uh, render view, give it an emission material, new principled to emission. And then I'm gonna go back and make this wireframe a little bit smaller, something like this. Let's go ahead and uh, just on this particular plane, hit Alt D and that's just gonna make a nice instance of this. So we're not adding a bunch of more, a lot more geometry to this scene. And then let's see how this is looking. It's pretty cool. Let's go into the nodes of this plane and just kind of mess with the way it looks to give it more of an organic look. So if we hit the period key, we can kind of bring in where that is. All I'm gonna do is add a color ramp here and a noise texture. We're gonna plug this factor into the noise texture of the color ramp. I mean, the noise texture of the factor in the color ramp. Plug this into the color. And then what I wanna do is just kind of bring that in 
go from linear to ease to make it a much more smooth gradient. Maybe bring that scale up a little bit. So that's all I wanted to do. Actually bring the scale, something like that. So that's all I wanted to do to give it just a more interesting, detailed look here in our scene. And we don't need to bring the strength up because we want this to be a minimal element, just like kind of all the other elements are. Last thing we need to add before we can add the text and the animation is that volume trick. Again, if you've seen the channel a lot, the volume trick is something I've done a bunch. So if you bring this cube here, hit S8, Control A, Apply Scale. We're gonna go back here to Shading and then click New, delete the principle and get a volume. So Shift A, Search VOL, Principled Volume. And if you've never seen this before, it's almost like magic. What this does, this density allows you to kind of fade things out into the distance. It's really nice. So now we can go ahead and loop or create a loop. Now, if you don't like this box hiding everything, we can do what we did to the plane and go from viewport display here to uh, wire. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this box plane because we don't need it. So now we have our loop. I'm going to go ahead and highlight everything except the camera. And then I'm going to hit M, new collection. I'm going to call it loop, even though we're not making a loop. That's just kind of a habit. Shift A, collection instance, loop. Now, just bring it over. I'm going to hold down control so they just snap to the grid here. Now we can run our camera through this and make something really cool. I'm going to go and... So now that we have that, I want to put my text right here in the middle. So get your text just like that. I'm going to bring it right over here maybe to even yeah we'll figure that out a little bit right there rx90 to flip it up i was way too zoomed out so make sure you hit rx90 to flip it up and then just for now we'll just go ahead and center it out here just like that and then add an emission material here and we'll give it a strength of like 15. that might be too much but who cares let's go and animate our camera so if we have our camera here, we simply just want to run it through these patterns till we arrive, say, right there. So I'm going to bring my camera back to something like this. It's very cluttered. We'll kind of fix that later. So we'll start the camera here. In your preferences, make sure your animation interpolation is on Bezier. We're going to change that back later. So click on your camera. Click on the little orange box there. Get a keyframe. We're going to go to say right there, 88, frame 88. And we're going to run our camera straight through to right there. Click your keyframe. And we have our animation. We'll tweak that. Actually, we might as well just tweak it now. So click on the animation tab. I'm going to hit zero to go to my camera view. Bring that up. And then I'm going to go click here and go to the graph editor. So all we need to do is take this little thing and just bring it over. And what that's going to do is give us a little speed boost. So if we click and go press play, nice speed boost. One of the easiest tricks to really up the quality of your animations is just editing, sorry, editing, editing your speed. Just go straight through just like that. And that's what we want. So now that we have that, we can go back and start animating some other things like our textures and patterns. First thing I do want to get is our uh, cube and go back to shading and make the density a little higher. Just like that. All right. So we do need a timeline. So bring that up, get a new timeline and let's start animating textures. So the plane, let's see which one is this. That's the little circle plane. So we'll just kind of zoom in here and uh, go to right there. Okay, circle plane. Let's go ahead and make our circles much smaller by bringing up your scale, something like this. All right, so to animate the actual movement here, first we need to go to our preferences here in the animation and go back to linear. So right here, right click on the W and then we're going to go back here to frame 136. I had already previously changed it to 136 frames because that's about as long as I want my animation to be. You could customize that. You would just change that right there. I'm going to do 136 frames. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm actually zoom out so I can look at these actual circles here because I couldn't see it. 
something like that, insert keyframe. So that is their motion. So let's click on this plane. Let's see which one is that, these. So let's uh, click on it and make sure we are playing with it just like that. Bring our scale up. And then let's go ahead and just animate that. So we'll go back to frame zero, right click on the W, insert keyframe, go to the end, and then just kind of play with it, insert keyframe. So it's a little too fast. I'm gonna click on the texture and I'm gonna go back a little bit, right click, insert keyframe. There we go, it's not quite as fast. And that's all the animating that we'll need to do on those textures. So now if we wanna look at how the animation looks, it looks pretty cool. Now the text is really boring, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit the tab key and type in, I don't know, and type in in the caps lock, Z-O-O-M, makes sense. And then here you can click on font and it, it when you click on the file, it should access your library of fonts. So that's pretty cool, even though the Z, that's a terrible Z. Um, we can do something else that's much more interesting. We'll do this, that looks pretty dope. And now we can check it out. Really, really cool. And then now what I'm gonna do is duplicate everything around it. So I'm gonna take this guy, I'm gonna hit Alt D, I'm gonna bring it this way. I'm gonna hit him again, Alt D, bring him here. I'm holding down Shift so that everything snaps to the proper grid. And then I'm just trying to bring these around because the problem is the camera can see the edge of our design. And that doesn't look very cool or professional or like you know what you're doing. So we're gonna fix that. And so now if we notice the aftermath, a much bigger looking world and a much cooler looking scene. Just like that. So what you can also do here is select your planes and just scale them up so that they're touching each other there. So then you can select this plane, then you can select this plane here, scale those up, and also select this plane and scale that up. And what that's gonna allow is a much better looking scene. And you may need to adjust the scale of your patterns, but outside of that, and that is how you create this really cool animation. Again, I would play with the scale of your patterns, play with some rotation in the camera if you want, make this animation totally yours, have some fun, change color, but there you go. That is how you create this. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial.